Hello and welcome to my very first video tutorial. Today I'll be ex trying to, hopefully, explain hydrocarbons. What are our learning objectives? So by the end of this I want you to understand that the organic chemistry includes the study of carbon. We'll also want to understand the composition of hydrocarbons, particularly alkanes and alkenes, their structural formulas, their properties, and the reactions that they undergo. Briefly, we'll look into alkynes, and after that, we'll look into the fractional distillation of crude oil. Okay, you may ask, what are hydrocarbons? It's a real ingenious name, really, because hydrocarbons are created uh, are made out of hydrogen and carbon. Now, there are three million compounds that carbon uh, can form. Uh, this type of chemistry, anything to do with carbon, is cl classified as organic chemistry. This is what makes organic chemistry such a large topic. The simplest organic compounds are your hydrocarbons. What makes them organic? As mentioned, uh, anything that has carbon in it is classified as organic. So if we have a look at this water that is falsely being advertised as organic water, uh, we know this is not true because water does not have carbon in it, nor do we want water to have carbon in it either. All right, so when we have carbon, we can bond it with a hydrogen, and uh, we know that they end up sharing their their electrons. This is They share them covalently. This is because there is a very low electronegativity difference between hydrogen and carbon. Uh, and all hydrocarbons are also nonpolar. All right, so there are three different types of hydrocarbons that I want you to know. Now, carbon can also bond, uh, can not only bond with hydrogen, but carbon can also bond with another carbon and another one and another one and another one. And they don't always have to be single bonds. They can be double or triple. It, this, this type of, um, the depending on the bonds that are present is how we categorize them. So... If we look over here in this structure, we notice that there are only single double, uh, single covalent bonds between the two carbons. If there are only single covalent bonds, we classify these as alkanes. If there is at least one double bond in the whole structure, we will then classify this as an alkene. And if there is at least one triple bond in the whole structure, we will classify this structure as an alkyne. A bit about alkanes. Well, we already know that they have single bonds, and just to double check, look at all these structural formulas right here. There are all single bonds between the carbon and carbon. No double bonds, no triple bonds, just single bonds. We can also identify alkanes through the ending of their name. So alkanes always end in ane. If we have a look, methane, ethane, propane, they all have that ane in common. Alkanes are also classified as saturated hydrocarbons. Now, this will probably make a little more sense later on, but if you think about it, these are as there are as many hydrogens as possible because there are any singly bonded. Once you add a double bond in there, you lose a hydrogen. Uh, I'll explain a little later when we look at the next ones. Uh, alkanes undergo combustion and substitution reactions. A property of alkane is that as you increase the them in size, in chain length, so does the boiling point increase. So if we have a look at methane, its boiling point is negative 162. That is a very low boiling point. Whereas if we were to look at heptane down here, it's a larger molecule, and its boiling point is 98. How is this so, you may ask? This is due to the London dispersion forces. Every molecule undergoes, uh, has the dispersion forces into molecular dispersion forces. Now, as we increase in chain length, so too do the dispersion forces that they have. This only has like a little bit of dispersion forces is happening around, whereas heptane has this bit, this bit, and this bit that can all contribute to the dispersion forces. The more that you have, the greater force that you have, the stronger they are held together, the intermolecular molecules. So the more energy you need to put into it to pull them apart. That's what boiling is. is. Now, if I were to ask you to give me the general formula, I, uh, I mean the molecular formula, 
you could use this general formula to do so. If I were to ask you, what, what is the molecular formula of an alkane that has three carbons? You can plug this, these numbers in into that and then you'll get your molecular formula. All right, a bit about alkenes. So we know that they at least contain one double bond. See, we have an alkene right here, and because this one also is classified as an alkene, because it has at least one double bond present, and same with this, at least one double bond present. We can also identify them through the endings, um, through their name. The end ends in ene. Alkenes end in ene, where we have ethene, propene, butene. They are classified as unsaturated because they do not have as many hydrogens as possible, whereas alkanes did. Whereas alkenes, you have your double bonds, so you have to get rid of the hydrogens on the sides. Likewise with alkanes, if I were to ask you, uh, with these, if I were to ask you, give me the molecular formula of ethene, you would know that it has two carbons in it, so you would just plug the, that two into this general formula right here. Let's look into alk alkynes. This is very brief. Uh, we at least know that it needs to have one triple bond. We have one triple bond, therefore it is an alkyne. At least one, at least one. Likewise with all the others, the alkynes end in the ending "-ine". Ethyne, propyne, butyne. They are classified as unsaturated because they do not have as many hydrogens as possible. And if I were to ask to give you uh, to give me the molecular formula for propyne, which contains four carbons, you would oh nope three carbons, you would substitute that three into this formula right here.